It's Monday, December 9th, and this is now on HNN. Days after the Pearl Harbor shipyard shooting, the military releases an official photo of the gunmen. I'm still trying to piece everything together. Plus, new developments to report in the naval base shooting in Florida. Tourists captured the moment a volcano erupted off New Zealand's North Island, killing several people and leaving an unknown number unaccounted for. So when the meals hit, it overwhelmed the country. Health officials are urging travelers to stay away from Western and American Samoa as the measles death toll rises. And nobody understands really what the majority is trying to do. A day of disruptions at today's impeachment hearing. I'm Natalie Brand on Capitol Hill, where attorneys for and against are testifying. These stories and iPhone users, it may be time to say goodbye to those lightning chargers. Coming up on This Is Now. Hey everyone, thanks for joining us for this Monday edition of This Is Now. I'm your director producer Jonathan Safi alongside Ashley here. Hi everyone, let's get started. So five days after the shooting at the Pearl Harbor Naval Shipyard, the military has released the official photo of the sailor who used his service weapons to fatally shoot two civilian workers and wound a third before turning the gun on himself. Now the boot camp photo of 22-year-old Gabriel Romero was released to HNN this morning after we requested it last week, Thursday and Friday. Multiple Multiple sources confirmed that the Texas native was having disciplinary problems at work and had previously been enrolled in anger management courses. He was also facing non-judicial punishment, which means it's a lower level administrative administrative process for minor criminal misconduct. Now, in a press conference on Friday, military officials refused to elaborate on why Romero was armed at a time when he was facing a disciplinary hearing. And for our podcast listeners out there, those of you not watching us here on Facebook Live or YouTube, we know you couldn't see that photo there. That's why we posted it to all our digital platforms. Check it out on our homepage, H&N app, or even on Facebook. If we've uh, posted a link on our timeline as well. Yep, and meanwhile, new details in the shooting at the naval base in Pensacola, Florida. The Saudi gunman who killed three U.S. sailors is said to have posted anti-American tweets before the killings, and he may have been involved in an ongoing dispute with one of the instructors at the base. This report comes from David Bignad. The shooter was Mohammed Saeed al-Shamrani. He reportedly posted anti-American tweets right before the rampage. CBS News has learned he may have had some issues with one of his instructors who he didn't like. No one has said how or where he purchased the Glock 9mm handgun that he used to kill three U.S. sailors. I'm a big supporter of the Second Amendment, but the Second Amendment applies so that we, the American people, can keep and bear arms. It does not apply to Saudi Arabians. One of the victims, Mohammed Haytham, chose to follow in his mother Evelyn Brady's footsteps and became a sailor. I am so very proud of everything you have accomplished. And I'll miss you. I will miss you dearly. Ryan Blackwell was among eight others wounded in the attack. Took some rounds, uh, I got to save some people in the process and I'm kind of still trying to piece everything together. The 21 year old shooter was a second lieutenant in the Royal Saudi Air Force. The Associated Press has reported that the gunman held a dinner party days earlier where he watched mass shooting videos with three other Saudi students. According to the AP, one of the three students who attended the dinner party recorded video outside the classroom building as the shooting was taking place. As much as I would love to answer any questions about the videos or any other presumption information that's out there, my goal is not to continue the misinformation campaign. Did somebody record the shooting as it happened? There's a lot of review that still needs to go on as to what happened that day. If it's misinformation, please clear it up for us. Next question, please. The FBI later told us there were multiple videos from base security surveillance, as well as witness cell phone videos taken outside the building during and after the shooting. The FBI says it still doesn't know whether the gunman acted alone or whether he was part of a larger network. All of the Saudi nationals who are training here at this base and learning how to become pilots are accounted for this morning, according to the FBI. No one is missing. In fact, they're under the command of their Saudi 
supervisor who we're told is restricting them to the base and that all of those Saudi nationals, especially those who are friends with the gunman, are cooperating with the investigation. David Begno, CBS News, outside the base here in Pensacola, Florida. All right, thank you, David, there. You know, we're going to take you live now out to Washington. This is the judiciary hearing. It's still going on. That's what we're looking at here in our digital center as we take a live look at one of our live windows out on the world. Yep, and today's public impeachment hearing is centered on both sides laying out their legal case. Natalie Brand reports from Capitol Hill. The testimony you're about to give is... Democratic and Republican lawyers made their best case for and time. against the impeachment of President Trump. President Trump used the power of his office to pressure and induce the newly elected president of Ukraine to interfere in the 2020 presidential election for President Trump's personal and political benefit. There is no indication of bribery, extortion, or other illegal conduct. The call is not the sinister mob shakedown that some Democrats have described. Democrats say the president abused his power and obstructed justice. If, in fact, President Trump can get away with what he did again, our imagination is the only limit to what President Trump may do next or what a future president may do next. Republicans argue Democrats just want the president out of office. We don't have a crime. We don't have anything we can actually pin, and nobody understands really what the majority is trying to do except that interfere and basically make sure that they believe the president can't win next year if he's impeached. White House lawyers declined to participate in today's hearing. Instead, President Trump sent a flurry of short tweets denouncing the proceedings. This hearing has been especially contentious with lawmakers frequently sparring and a disruption at the start. We voted for Donald Trump. A protester supporting the president had to be escorted out of the room. That the point not, of order is he's inappropriate to be up here asking questions. That is not a point of order. He's here. In Republicans court. repeatedly challenged Chairman Jerry Nadler about how he was conducting the hearing. The committee could finalize articles of impeachment this week. Natalie Brand, CBS News, Capitol Hill. Things getting heated yep. there in Washington. Mm -hmm. I know the full house is expected to vote by Christmas. Absolutely. But switching gears, let's get to some local news. Yep, back here at home, a crash involving two buses caused gridlock on the H1 eastbound this morning. Here's Lacey Denise. Eight people were sent to the hospital this morning after an accident involving two buses that snarled the morning commute into town. It happened shortly before 8 a.m. on the H1 heading eastbound prior to the Lique Lique off-ramp. A truck was wedged between two buses. Emergency medical services said eight people were in serious or stable condition and three people refused treatment. Thank you, Lacey, and an update on the measles outbreak in uh, Samoa. So health officials are urging travelers to stay away from Samoa and American Samoa as the neighboring islands continue to battle the outbreak. At least 70 people have died from the infectious virus in Samoa, while nine cases have been reported in American Samoa where they have a higher uh, immunization rate. So Hawaii's Lieutenant, er Lieutenant Governor Josh Green, he just came back from his medical mission there, and he sat down on sunrise this morning. Let's listen to what he had to say. So, so talk us through, paint us a picture. What, what did you see? How, how devastated was this nation? Well, the country was completely devastated by measles. The, the truth is, 18 months ago, they had a crisis where two uh, babies died from uh, immunizations given wrong. And so they lost public trust, and their immunization rate dropped down to the 30 percentile. So when the measles hit, it overwhelmed the country. They made an announcement that they would do 48 hours of total shutdown of their country, and I'd been in communication with their prime minister and the World Health Organization. They said, we know it's a moonshot, uh, Lieutenant Governor, but could you bring a medical team? We said yes. We put out the call, and we had 500 people volunteer within 24 hours, so amazing. But people were dying in the villages. Uh, the shocking cases we saw, we'll never forget. Yeah, we, we see all the time that people are concerned about vaccinations, they don't want to do it for whatever reason. What was the reception like there? Did, were they asking for this? The, in fact, there was, there was not a single person anywhere in the country that we went that didn't ask us for the immunization. We would go into a village and we saw the red uh, cloth that mm -hmm. people tied on their post or their house. That's what the government asked people to do to come and give immunizations. We'd get to one house or one fale and then 10, 12, 15 other family members or friends would come and we would immunize, bang, bang, bang. and. It was really wonderful because the small people are incredibly warm. Mm. 
we would go into villages and, for instance, in one case, uh, an elderly man said, please go see the baby. And we'd go just across the way and Nadine Tensala and I, she was my pediatrician on the team, uh, went in there and the baby had just died. And then we would hold a service and then immunize the rest of the family who trusted that it was necessary because that baby had six siblings. Mm. So it was bittersweet, uh, but to go from 30% immunization rate to 90% in like 48 hours, the World Health Organization said they'd never seen anything like it. So we were just honored to be a part of it. Yeah, so this is obviously important for a couple of reasons, but, but take us through what happens if they don't get this care. So if they don't get this care, and by the way, thanks to Hawaii and, and Fiji and Health Association Queens and, and HPH, all incredible volunteers, mm -hmm. uh, if they don't get the care, then another 30 to 40,000 people get measles. And if that 30 to 40,000 people get measles, the death rate was about 2%. So about 600 additional, uh, mostly babies, aged six months to four years will die. So it was just amazing. I mean, we knew Aloha was strong, but we didn't know it was this fast. And so we were just, it was incredible to mobilize, join with an international team, and then immunize a whole country. I, I think that we would do it again in a second if asked, but now the whole country will have immunity. So we hope that 600 deaths will be prevented. Yeah, and then you look at what potentially could happen. We see American Samoa obviously is now concerned about this. I mean, this is something that could have spread much wider than that, right? Had this not this this not been taken care of. Right. So there were there were more there were more than one or two reasons to go. One reason was just because we love our neighbors in the Pacific. The other reason was if we neglected this, they have a pretty rudimentary healthcare system. Yeah. If we didn't do this kind of action and immunize the whole country, we worry that measles could have spread rapidly to American Samoa, to New Zealand, to Australia, to Hawaii. And even in Hawaii, we have pockets of people that are unimmunized. Right. And I don't judge. I do strongly believe everyone should get immunized yeah. because babies will die otherwise, but we couldn't uh, risk having an epidemic sweep. One of the incredible things was this was all humanitarian volunteer and donated money. We yeah. didn't even use state money, but I'll tell you, it was in Hawaii's interest to do this, but it was more in um, humanity's interest. Yeah. And I think that this is gonna create a lot of partnerships going forward because New Zealand, Australia, and of course Samoa and American Samoa were very grateful. Uh, Mufi Hahnemann, lots of credit to him yeah. because he helped me connect to all those leaders. Very good. Well, one more question. Uh, obviously, this happens not solely because of this, but because they don't have the medical resources. They don't have the means. Yes. Obviously, they're taken care of as far as measles is concerned, but, but how concerned are we that something like this happens again with some other virus or some other form of sickness? Well, this kind of awakened them to the, the risks. So they're health organizations are beefing up very quickly, but we've also offered to be a part of that. We're now creating what we're calling the Hawaii Health Corps, mm -hmm. where we'll take volunteers, because we saw these hundreds and hundreds of people wanting to do that. So we'll be prepared to go again as volunteers, and they have very good partnerships. There was a team from New Zealand that had 24 doctors in country, Australia about the same, Norway sent 20. So the world awakened to this crisis because I tell you it's not going to be terrorism that gets us in this next century it's going to be an infectious disease outbreak and so we have to be much smarter about that and we were glad to do a small part of it. All right, there was a Lieutenant Governor there talking there. Of course, we have extensive coverage on this topic on our website. Our own Allison Blair went to Samoa with a team of health workers, posted and filed a bunch of of reports that you can see there um, and just check it out it's on our digital platforms again also on our social media it's something you will want to see Definitely. if you are interested in this story mm -hmm. yep and, and other news authorities have confirmed that at least one u.s citizen is among the five victims who died in the volcanic eruption on new zealand's white island now the red cross believes about a dozen americans were either on or near the island at the time riley carlson brings us this report <laughs> A group of tourists made a narrow escape from New Zealand's White Island volcano as it erupted, engulfing the area in ash. As the plume of ash and smoke rose thousands of feet into the air, other tourists watched from the shore in disbelief. Medics initially rescued more than 20 people, many with burns. 
But police now say they don't believe there are any more survivors, and concerns about more eruptions have rescuers putting their search on hold. We will only go to the island when it is safe to do so for our people. Webcam video appears to show at least one group of tourists inside the crater before the eruption. It is now clear that there were two groups on the island, those who were able to be evacuated and those who were close to the eruption. Scientists say they recorded some volcanic activity at the site in the last few weeks, including mild tremors and toxic gas. Riley Carlson, CBS News. Of course, we're going to stay on top of that story and bring you the latest as it comes in. It has the very, very latest coming up tonight at 5.30 on KHNL. Until then, we we're going to take a look outside. We're looking live from our digital center outside towards town, looking at Diamond Head. I understand the weather is going to be a little sticky out there. Let's get a full forecast with Guy Hoggy. How's it on this Monday? I'm Guy Hoggy with your HawaiiNewsNow.com forecast. Fairly clear skies across the state, except for a weak front over Kauai. They'll likely see a few light showers on the Garden Island. Otherwise, we won't see much rain at all. A little bit of moisture heading to the east side of the Big Island as well. But we're likely to see morning sunshine, afternoon clouds, and a fairly dry weather pattern all the way through Wednesday. Some of those afternoon clouds might spawn a few showers, but really not much moisture out there until Thursday. That's when a front's going to drop in increase the rain Thursday and Friday. Also increase the trade winds. It's going to be quite breezy Thursday, Friday, maybe even into the weekend as well. Now the surface on the way up. The Billabong Pipeline Masters is on at the pipeline. It's going to be rising through the day just below advisory levels, getting even bigger tomorrow. Uh, West Shore is going to catch that as well. And the high surf advisory for the East Shore has been tossed out. Now remember, with the light winds, surf conditions will be good in the morning, slightly choppy by midday. And that's what we've got. Light winds through Wednesday, increasing clouds, increasing showers, and increasing winds Thursday and Friday before things mellow out for the weekend. Keep it here on OA News Now. We'll have all your severe weather updates. All right. Thank you, Guy, there. Not too bad. Yeah, Not too bad. Not too bad. Yeah. So. Do you have an iPhone, Jonathan? I do, and I've heard about this story, mm -hmm. and I'm not happy about it. Really? Yeah. No. If you're like us, and you have those lightning charging cables mm -hmm. everywhere in your house, yep. in your car, at your desk, well, it may be time to say goodbye to those things. And that's because analysts say the company may get rid of the charging cable and port on premium models in 2021, which means your iPhone would require a wireless charging dock. Now, experts also estimate that 2020 will be a big year for iPhones with five new releases. So goodbye, all my money. Oh, and I just <laughs> got the lightning charger and I've gotten like five of them. So I don't, you know, so I have one for everywhere. I mm -hmm. cannot replace them all. It's Apple not... hasn't confirmed the speculations, but. I do like wireless charging though. That yeah. is nice. It's pretty handy. Pretty handy there. We got some big news regarding the Olympics. Mm -hmm. We're tracking it closely and hoping to go, but some serious big news. That's right. So Russia was slapped with a four year ban for doping from the World Anti-Doping Agency. That means there will likely be no Russian teams at the 2020 Summer Olympics or the 2022 Winter Games. Imitez Tibet reports from London. This decision by the World Anti-Doping Agency is shocking, but it has to be said it's not entirely unexpected. Now, the organization has agreed unanimously to punish Moscow for what it describes as manipulating laboratory data, planting fake evidence, and for deleting files linked to the positive doping tests of Russian athletes. Now, Russians will still be able to compete at global competitions, but only under a neutral flag and with no national anthem. But this is really a story that starts back in 2014 and the Winter Olympics in Sochi. The games were a prestige project for President Vladimir Putin, who wanted to project Russia's athletic superiority to the world. And it did by winning several medals. But just two years later, and Moscow sporting reputation was in ruins. That's because a scientist turned whistleblower revealed a massive state-sponsored doping program. Now, the country had to show that it had changed, but today's ruling makes it clear that it hasn't. Now, Russia's anti-doping agency has 21 days to appeal this ban. Impious Tide, CBS News, London. All right, and we've got some more Olympic news to talk about, but that is a juicy scoop mm -hmm. right there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and on the Today Show, they recognize members of America's surfing team, including Hawaii's own Carissa Moore. 
It was an overwhelming sense of emotion just because like I haven't let myself even think about the Olympics because the U.S. team has been so competitive. I mean, top, uh, we were the top three in the world. Um, Lakey Peterson, is um, she finished third, and she had an incredible year. So um, it was really difficult, and um, I'm really stoked. Yes, go Carissa. <laughs> yeah, so Moore was joined by Carolyn Marks, who's from Florida. She also recently clinched her fourth world championship on Maui, so it's been a awesome end of the year for her. And then the Today Show host sort of poked fun of her for using the word stoked. <laughs> um, and they said they'd have to get up on their surfing lingo because they're going to the Olympics to cover it. Hey, Scott Humber, <laughs> we got two people right here that want to go. Hi, we'll keep us in mind. We really want to go to Japan, seriously. <laughs> But you know what? Before we get to the Olympics, there's a big other matchup that's going to happen here. We're really proud of these guys. Tell us about it, Ashley. These gals. Oh, yes, yeah. the these Rainbow Lucky sure. in a volleyball team, who's now 26 and 3 this year. They're heading to the Sweet 16. It's about fight and heart. And in the last two years, they did that. The last two teams, they did that. You know, it just takes a little bit more time. We're not going to snap our fingers like, hey, this is our culture. Get with it. You know, it takes time, and these girls are buying into it and now this is the product. We've worked so hard to get to this point, so we wouldn't want to let something like, you know, travel <coughs> dictate how we play, or like excuses like that. So I think it's such a fun time of the season. Like, this is the best part. So we just want to go out and go hard, so yeah. Yeah, we have nothing to lose, so. Yeah, <laughs> we're good. <Yeah. laughs> we got it. You got it. You got it. You got it, girls. I love the confidence. The Rainbow Wahine smashed Northern Colorado and San Diego in the first two rounds this past weekend at the Stan Sheriff Center. They play Nebraska this Friday at 10.30 Hawaii time. Go get them. All right. Even more sports news. This mm -hmm. is really interesting, actually. This is this, I would be sick if I was this kid, and I'll explain. So there's a lot of racket going on about Serena Williams' smashed racket. I don't know if you guys remember this, but the tennis star smashed it at the 2018 U.S. Mm -hmm. Open after losing to Naomi Osaka. So according to the New York Times, she gave it to one of the ball boys who sold it to a dealer in Manhattan earlier this year for just 500 bucks. Okay. I know. Why would, one, why would you sell it's it? It's a good chunk of change, but... Well, anyway, it was sold again at a New Jersey auction, this time for $20,910. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I'd be a little irked there. Right? I would feel sick. But also, she gave it to him. Exactly. She deserves it. I, why would you sell that? Yeah, why? Hold on to that, you know? <sighs> but anyway, well, there are other, other ball items. Ball boys don't get paid too much, but... <laughs> <laughs> but it's like a, a piece of history, tennis history... That he just and gave also up sort of a piece of bad sportsmanship. You come on, you don't do that. It's emotion. But I love watching her get all act <laughs> riled up. She, I mean, she's just entertaining to watch, right. and she's such an incredible athlete. She sure is. Yeah, so other items sold at this auction. Jesse Owens, an American track and field athlete, his gold medal from the 1936 Olympics went for $615,000. And LeBron cool. James's rookie card from the 2003-2004 uh, season sold for $198,000. Well, people still collect baseball cards. I have a whole tub of them somewhere in my parents' basement, so I might have to go through them and yeah, start looking them knows, up. Yeah, Jonathan? You could yeah. be a millionaire. All right, Mom, dig those up, please. <laughs> I know you're watching. Um, all right, last story <laughs> of the day. Mom's watching. She's, she is. She's our biggest fan, actually. <laughs> Um, next story is going to be a little bit bananas. Yeah, so Art Basel, it's an international art show uh, that happens every year in Switzerland, Florida, and Hong Kong. Well, there was an interesting art installation at the Miami show over the weekend, first for its unusual design and selling price, and then because it was eaten. Lisa Mateo explains. Art performance. Hungry artist. It's the bite that's gone viral. It may not look like much, but the ripening banana duct taped to the wall was the masterpiece of Italian artist Maurizio Catalan on display at Art Basel in Miami Beach. The first edition sold last week for $120,000. That didn't seem to matter to performance artist David Detuna, who grabbed it off the wall on Saturday and took a bite. This was art performance for me, and absolutely I'm not sorry. Detuna is from the former Soviet Republic of Georgia, but now calls New York home. 
And I think this is the first one in art history when one artist eats concept for another artist. Catalan, whose banana was bought at a local grocery store, is known for his comic pieces, including a fully functional golden toilet that was stolen from an English palace in 2017. It's mocking the art world. That's what Marito Catalan does. As for his latest piece, Comedian, the banana was replaced with a fresh one for the buyer, and the old one... Tests for like $120,000. <laughs> no charges have been filed against Detuna. Very tasty. Lisa Mateo, CBS News, New York. What? <laughs> <laughs> All right, wait. So many things wrong with the store. I know, do you know I was an artist? Did you know that? No. Well, you guys... Right move. there. I'm posting <laughs> that posted on the wall. Right there. You guys can see our podcast listeners can't, but I well, just take made bids some, now. Yeah, it's on at eBay. $120,000. Yeah, it's at least I'll move out of the way. posted art is it's gorgeous. <laughs> it's it's really conceptional, really. Yeah. It's gonna stay there for a while. No one touch it. So visionary. Don't be Jonathan. using that for your notes. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I'm going to write some notes on it. You guys, that was a newscast of sort of some bizarre stories today. I, I liked it. And we're going to keep it coming. We're always going to keep you informed of the interesting and what you need to know here on This Is Now. And thank you for joining us on this Monday. Have a great week, everyone. Bye-bye.